Right now it is time for the Berkshire Edge on air. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a time we welcome in uh, Marcy and Dave and say Dave. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we're not only on air, we're in deep space. <laughs> <laughs> we are out of this world. That's right. At least you're not in the deep state. <laughs> in deep state. I no, did. <laughs> that's, that's true. All right. Well, speaking about the deep Although state. Although we have lots to say about that's the deep state. That's what I was going to say. No this <laughs> Every week. Speaking about the deep state, we'll go to the State Department of Environmental Protection. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, the, uh, we have a up in the little hamlet of Housatonic, which is part of uh, uh, Great Barrington, uh, has a private water system that has had some troubles recently. Uh, in fact, has continuously had problems, but uh, uh, their uh, the Department of the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection has slapped them with a administrative order telling them to fix their um, uh, chlorination system uh, to prevent uh, you know the, the to make the water safe and drinkable. Um, it's disgusting. There well, was, what happens is that they, it has, it, there are two issues. One is the chlorination system, and the other is the continuing complaints from customers about rust-colored water. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, in any case, the, the, uh, there are 800 customers there, uh, and uh, there is, it's a private system, and now there's talk, because of all these problems, there's talk about the water system being coming part of the town water system, that, they, that they'll buy out this, pro, this private system. Um, you know, the problem is that as a private system, they can't access the kind of money and grants that are available to a public system. Um, so they're in a pickle. <laughs> and they don't make enough money from 800 customers to be able to you know, to revamp the system. Yeah. So uh, it's, a, it's an old system left over from the time that Housatonic was a mill town, and the mill owned the, the isn't that right, David? The mill yeah, the mills, the water system was originally set up to, to service the mills themselves, in addition to the workers and the residences. But uh, um, that is long, those mills are no longer operating, and... Um, it's it's interesting. I've over the years I've seen lots of private water systems uh, issues come up. Um, I was remember I was in if you don't mind me digressing a bit, but I remember I was in Bennington, Vermont, when uh, they, they had a private water system there that um, uh, whose profits were were uh, supposed to go to the hospital, and that's how the hospital was supposed to be uh, financed. Um, however, the expenses of the <laughs> of maintaining the system grew so much that there was no profits at all for the hospital. In fact, it was in the water system was in debt, so they finally had to uh, they finally had to public make it a public water system. But in any case, but uh, if, that, if that happens, does 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 the person make a profit, or does he just lose the money that he's lost and it gets turned over to the town? What you mean if they if they buy it if they, if they buy, buy if, if the yeah, town yeah. buys it yeah. yeah well I think the town services it that means that the whole the 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 the, the tax base for the water system uh, which includes all of Great Barrington would be able to absorb you know, maintain the, yeah absorb it and maintain that system the other problem really is a more is another issue um, is the pressure uh, the hydrants the fire hydrants which has been an issue, an ongoing issue for a number of years, is that those hydrants don't have enough pressure to, to uh, you know, to service a, a, a you know, fire. If there, was, if, there, if there was a big fire, they would have trouble, um, <clears throat> you know, getting enough water to fight it. Um, and that has impacted insurance rates, actually, in the, in the village. So... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an issue. 
<laughs> All right. Put it that way. Well, uh, once again, we'll move on, and this time uh, mm-hmm. we'll go to the Norman Rockwell Museum. Oh, the Norman Rockwell Museum. Yes, they had a wonderful ceremony there um, last weekend to to welcome uh, new citizens. And um, 23 immigrants from 16 different countries were, uh, were uh, honored by receiving citizenship. <laughs> and, um, you know, what do you know? Um, we are a country of immigrants, despite, our, uh, despite what our president likes to think. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, our reporter went there, and, um, and it was a very moving ceremony. You know, yeah. um, these people value becoming citizens so much more than those of us who are born here value it you know they they know what they've come from and where they've arrived and um so i I mean i know this from previous people i've known who've become naturalized that it's really a very moving ceremony and and often the test that they take is you know most uh most most americans cannot pass that most americans can't pass that that's right. right Yes. No, I mean, I had a friend in New York who, who became a citizen. He was a Serb. And, uh, you know, he was studying the, the Constitution. He knew all the, you know, the, the questions. I couldn't answer all the questions. No, it, it, it would so, be, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting lesson. It's, years ago, well, I helped. it's like religious converts. You know, they are often more religious than the people who were raised in the religion. Years ago, I helped a friend who uh, asked me how to become a, a citizen. Uh, put them in touch with Nancy Johnson. Uh, they were they lived in this country for uh, twenty some years, mm. and uh, they became American citizens. And it really was a, a it's, it's absolutely a, a nice moving feeling. and it's absolutely yeah. wonderful and it's been going on since uh, you know for, for some time. So let's let's yeah. let, let us widen the lens ever so slightly. Well, yes. you know what was also moving is that of course uh, on the walls at the Norman Rockwell Museum are um, you know Norman Rockwell's famous paintings of the Four Freedoms. So it was quite. A, yeah. You know, a moving ceremony, play. and yeah, it's and you know, it's, an, a, it's a real ceremony uh, for. It's a real honor to become a citizen, and maybe we all should go through it. You know, I mean, I'm just thinking that we're we're not born citizens, but we have to become citizens. And uh, David, I have to, I have to I hate to tell you, what. We should have learned it in school. That's right. <laughs> okay. you, you are now mentioning a civics problem. I'm, I'm not blaming teachers. Don't get me wrong. Is it an anti- yeah, but, but this but is this is stuff this is the you... problem that we have. Uh, if it's not if it's not on a smartphone, people aren't going to aren't going to look at it. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's awful. Right, right. Well, you know that's true, and uh, you know we face that in the town meeting uh, uh, situation too, where people are growing up here and they don't really realize how the town meeting form of government right. operates. Yeah. And I've often said that they should in, in, incorporate in the high school education, and maybe in elementary school education as well, um, uh, an appreciation and, a, and an instruction in the local civil go- civic government and how it works and how it's everybody's, you know, duty to really participate yep. in one way or another, at least go to town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, uh, become aware of you know the issues that are affecting our community and how to better them. So um, anyway, well, that's what this uh, ceremony at the Norman Rockwell Museum brings to mind. All right, you know? now, the, I, your next story it looks pretty interesting to me, and that's a, a local trio creating family documentaries. Yes. Oh yes, um, uh, imprint films. They're they're doing documentaries of families, family backgrounds. Uh, and histories, and it's uh, it's uh, it's really interesting. It's um, it's a uh, uh, you know it's a kind of genealogy that you can you can you can actually pass on to to your children and and to their children, so that they have a record of where you came from. I guess we're on an immigrant theme here, aren't we? <laughs> um, and uh, but it it's uh, these. Three guys have put together this this program, and they're they uh, one of the first uh, families they did was Mark Hyman, who's uh, uh, a well known entrepreneur here in Great Barrington, um, or lives here. But um, it, it's 
it's fascinating. They interviewed his mother <laughs> and father. And uh, so they're on video uh, talking about where they came from. And um, so it's a, it's, it, it's, and do they inc- are they including documents too, David, and memorabilia in the story? Or just yes, they are. Yeah. So it's it's uh, they can go through, you know, it's really a, a record. It's a video record of uh, of of a family, you know, before the, the before the memory of the you know memories are lose before the, all that information is lost. You know, it, I mean, as, as it, the it story is written by Andrew Blackman, and he was talking about how, you know, he he is sorry that he, he didn't he doesn't have he didn't have collect all you know the photos and memorabilia from his family, and uh, so it's an interesting story. All right, well, um, I, I, I want to move on to the next story because yeah. I, I I find it is uh, even more interesting, and that. Is when I first looked at the story, so I said, I said to myself, what's this story doing uh, in the Brooks Ridge? But then the local connection, uh, the aunt uh, of one of the Parkland students, uh, an organizer for the March of Our Lives, lives locally, and that has led to a report on, on how Parkland and Sandy Hook get together uh, in this story. Well, it's also because we had a local activist who went to uh, Newtown or Sandy Hook, um, and you know, and wrote back. I mean, it's you know, it's 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 a local story in Sandy Hook, but it's also a story of you know great interest to everybody. Yeah. But but uh, we were very we we actually had a local activist who went and sent us her impressions and uh, and photos of the day where the uh, students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas came to visit with the people at Sandy Hook who had also had the shooting in the school and it was you know it's a very it was a very moving day yeah it, <clears throat> it Cameron Caskey is the is the uh, is the organizer is the student from Florida Parkland Florida who organized this march for our lives and it's uh, um, you know trying to Call attention to the dangers of gun violence, and um, yeah, uh, you know, actually, Great Barrington does have a connection, um, some memory of this because uh, a number of years ago there was a student Wayne Lowe who shot a number of who uh, purchased some guns and shot a number of his fellow students and, and a teacher at, uh, at Simon's Rock, Simon's College. Rock Col- Bard College at Simon's Rock here in. Great Barrington, and it? that was one of the first because yeah. it was uh, it was around nineteen it's, uh, 1994. Yeah, um, it was you know it was there was the Texas Tower shooting, and then there was uh, you Rock. know Simon's Rock, it, which didn't get such national publicity. Um, but um, so we you know we and it's and it's still you know there is still a, a rule about. Uh, Gun shoot, shooting guns within a certain distance from the Simon's Rock campus that continues to be enforced. Mm. Uh, so, so that you know, we're very conscious of these things here in Great Barrington. Yeah, well, when you're talking about gun violence, this next story is also pretty cool about a concert tonight at Tanglewood. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, now, when we uh, say tonight, we should say it is Wednesday night because uh, this, you know, anybody that listens to this rebroadcast uh, podcast or anything, we're talking about tonight. And that, uh, yeah, not, so that's August fifteenth. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday, August fifteenth. That's right. right. Uh, that's tonight at Tanglewood. Um, a Russian pianist and the Jack Quartet are going to um, um, do some. <laughs> are calling attention to the fact that Beethoven. Um, withdrew his the uh, Napoleon the dedication. the dedication to Napoleon from some music because he he realized that Napoleon uh, was a dictator and a demagogue, and since we're in the age of de- demagogues and dictators, both abroad and in oh, our country, it's, it's a worldwide <laughs> thing. It is. It's a worldwide thing. <laughs> So there, they there in the in the um, in the uh, run up to this concert, 
uh, you know, they've, they've highlighted the fact that this is, uh, uh, that what they're calling attention to is notorious demagogues. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it, this is a theme that seems to be running through all our stories these days. Uh, I love what, what, what is that, Edmund Burke? Uh, the, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat, repeat. it? I mean, yeah, right. right. Those just, who don't learn from history I'm so, are doomed to... I'm sorry, out of all the names you have in here, megalomaniacs, tyrants, uh, I still love, and I always love the word despot. <laughs> I, yeah, love despot. I love despots. <laughs> I love despots. I really... I, I mean, am a despot. <laughs> To me, that seems to be the lowest of low. Really? <laughs> really you're, you're a despot. Well, I, it sounds what? that I, way. I, like, I, you're a despot. I, I mean, Marshall, <laughs> I, I, Marshall, I don't think we've reached the lowest of low yet. <laughs> but, but I mean, we're, get, we're, 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 we're on the way. We're on the way, hey. and we'll have to think of a but, new term. But listen Excuse to the me. way. Listen to the words. You're a megalomaniac. Sounds strong. You're you're a tyrant. Sounds strong. You're a despot. It sounds sounds like, disgusting. You know, yeah. you know, I, I just just need to jump in here for one second because, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> thanks to uh, multiple screens and uh, what has happened is is people's lenses have become really you know it's 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 now and it's what they know. But I just want to say that in all the joking around that we do, <clears throat> we're not so far away from the Holocaust. And I no, just we're not. no no, but but I think it's really important that. Again, in context, sorry to uh, interfere, but just that, that that is kept in for all of the megalomaniacs and demagogues, et cetera, that we're dealing with. You know, that, that wasn't so very, very far away. All right. Right. Well, we you wonder, you know, you wonder whether we're not approaching something like that. Well, therefore, you know, you, the quote. That, that is, uh, that is it's, 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 we are living, unfortunately, in very, very intense times. I won't even say interesting times. Intense would be the word. Right yeah, the now. interesting times is a Chinese curse. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, All right. It's, uh, may you live in interesting times. Well, we are living in interesting times. But now let's make it feel better because I like this next story about humanizing yourself by going to Tanglewood and hanging out with a bunch of other people and mosquitoes. That are not this <laughs> Well, no, she didn't mention the mosquitoes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. Let's not. Let's be fair here. Um, it was a. It was a story. This is a story by our columnist uh, uh, Carol Owens, who uh, was pointing out how uh, people gather of all kinds of races, ages, um, religions, and so on. Gather on the lawn at Tanglewood. Thousands of people, um, without you know, in a kind of. Uh, it's a model of humanity enjoying it, the best of itself, you know, rather than the very divisive. And uh, th- there are no walls there in, at Tanglewood to, you know, prevent certain people from not getting close to the musicians or anything like that. It's, it's um, you know, she's just talking about a different kind of uh, I- ideal and picture of, of what humanity can be, and that she thinks that. It, it's an I, that this is a model that uh, maybe should be emulated uh, worldwide. But isn't it emulated just by virtue of the cultural, I mean, the vast cultural opera? There, there are many festivals, wonderful festivals during the summer that people go to. That have, oh yeah, that, that, oh, sure. that, that aren't uh, uh, you know divided. No, it's true. But on the other hand, you know, here we are in a country that is falling increasingly into you know, into division where people can't go to, they can't enjoy the same event. Well, all sales, so, I'll be willing to bet you if you go to a Tanglewood concert, there's not too many red magna hats. <laughs> well, <laughs> that may be, you know, no, well, I don't, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> who knows? I mean, but you know, probably. All right. Well, I want to, who well, knows who well, redneck yeah. is? I mean, <laughs> you know, there are people of, of <clears throat> all different, you know, economic strata yeah. who go there. Yeah, that's true. Want to go to the last story because we only have about a minute left, and that is smoke signals from the swamp. (laughs) Smoke signals, yes. Well, that is our 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 observer, our political observer, Duke Snyder, who um, is uh, takes a look at what is is going on in um, in the wider world of the of Washington, and has written a um, a rather. uh, cutting picture of the of the Trump administration, and in this is is this is this particular 
uh, edition of his uh, or her uh, observations. observations has to do with that Maria Butina, the, uh, the femme fatale Russian spy who seems to have ensnared, uh, embedded herself, you might say, in uh, the NRA, <laughs> as well as some members of the Trump administration. Um, she's in jail now, isn't she? She's being retained. She's being held. She's, she's being held. She's yeah. being held. Yeah. Is she being held in jail, or is she like on house arrest? No, she's, she's, she's in jail. Very serious uh, difficulties. Yeah, so. she's in. Yeah. She's in jail. And, and, and she has, you know, obviously um, been. Uh, she, she now has a ju- she now has a jumpsuit that matches her hair. <laughs> 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 but anyone really who's really like interested that. in, uh, the, you know, in in spy, it should uh, grab the other woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, it's, this is a John Le Carre novel it, waiting to happen, it, waiting to be just, written. Don't you think? No, no, it's been written by Daniel Silva. It's called The Other Woman. Oh, really? really? It, oh, right? okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? And what? Oh, I don't know that book. Yeah, you, the, the whole series is worthwhile, but uh, that's oh, the good. most recent one. All right. Well, hey, we're out of time, guys. <laughs> oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> Wow, well, that went fast. And we didn't talk. Fun. And we didn't talk about the water bottle ban once. Okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> no. did, oh! Did we report to you? We reported last yeah. week yeah, that the ban yeah. was upheld. I know. Right. Yeah. Yep. So it was right. <laughs> That's why I said it at the end. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll speak to you next week. Okay. okay. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, the BerkshireEdge.com on the web, uh, and uh, that is the Berkshire Edge on air.